Yeah, Dr. Kelman has joined us on the show this morning, and we're going to be talking to him about health goals for 2023. Yeah, I'm still getting used to saying 2023. <laughs> he is, of course, the head of occupational health and wellness at McLaren Health International. Dr. Kelman, you're welcome. David, good yeah, to be here. Happy yeah. New Year. Yeah, happy New Year to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't experienced yes, the health yes, segment yes, yes, yes. On, on this set before. I know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a fabulous um, um, setup. I mean, I, I, I entered the compound. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like, this is a major upgrade. <laughs> this, this, this is like the 2023 goal we all should have. Yeah, I know, goal. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, health goals for 2023. <laughs> What should we be looking at? Well, I mean, um, one thing, I, I take it from, from, from where, where, where he ended yeah, from. Yeah, the cool. You see, I mean, the cool. You see, the thing is, as Africans, as Ghanaians, mm. we, we leave a lot of things to God. Mm. You see, but um, in my little um, study and analysis of, of this same God, yeah. I, we, we realize that he's a God of principles. Mm. And there are things that if you don't work out for yourself, he won't work it out for you. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we not seen pastors drop dead whilst they are preaching? Yep, yep. Because they are, they are not being consistent on taking their medications mm. for their hypertension mm. or their diabetes or, or one of those things. How many Christians, how many faith people have we not lost because of negligence of their own yeah. bodies? Yeah. You see, and so it, it tells you that there's a, there's a part of this whole, um, this, this whole life that is dependent on you. Mm. You see, prayer will not do it. Prayer is important, but it will not make the right decisions for you. Yeah. You still have to make those choices for yourself. Mm. And thankfully, we have an opportunity. We are starting a whole new cycle. Yeah. I mean, today is the 3rd of January. Yeah. We are alive. You know, it means that there's a reason why we are still here. And once we are here, it means that we need to, we need to lay out certain plans and agendas for this year. Yeah. Just as you do for your, for your children's I mean, school fees. I mean, you have to plan to pay the school yeah. fees. I mean, I have to pay school fees tomorrow. So I, yeah. <laughs> You've been planning. I'm telling you. you know, just as you plan to pay your, yeah. to, to do your retirement um, deductions, just mm. as you plan to do mm. every other thing, you have to also make health a priority. Yeah. You see, because at the end of the day, we have one body. Mm. And it is this body that's supposed to serve us for our lifetime. And there's evidence that people who plan or people who prioritize their health mm. tend to actually live longer than people who pray for people who pray for long life. Yeah. See, so that's why that's why I started by saying that prayer will not do yeah. it for you. You know, everybody prays to a, to, a, to an mm. extent, mm. but it is only those who go the step further and do the action part. They yeah. act on the prayer. They are the yeah. ones who are going to make it to see mm. whatever age mm. they want to see. Mm. You see, and so we, this is why it's important to set goals. You know, and once you've entered a new year, I mean, as part of your new year resolution, you need to factor in your health. Yeah. It's, it's not, it won't, it won't, health does not happen by chance. You see, and the typical Ghanaian only comes to hospital when they are sick. Mm. You know, and if you do that, if you come to hospital only when you are sick, you actually tend to spend more, more money. money. Like you physically spend more money, number one. And then number two, you're not able to make money. Whilst so, you're sick. Whilst you're sick. And mm. so it's a double whammy. You know, yeah. you're you are not making money and then you are spending money. Mm. Um, especially, I mean, the people who actually feel this the most are those who run their own businesses. Mm. You know, so you are running yeah. an online business, you are running a market, you are you, a market woman or a market man. You know, you are not in the market to sell. So you're actually not getting anything in and then you're expending. Mm. You know, so it's a, it's a big deal. So if you're able to put some plans and measures in place to help us, um, you know, map out the year when it comes to our health, yeah. it has it has innumerable um, benefits to yeah. everybody, you yeah. know, and the country as a whole, mm. you know. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's good that yeah. we are talking about it today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I guess my, my, my thoughts are going in the direction of um, medical checkups, regular medical checkups. And um, now I'm even hearing doctors are saying that not once a year is not even enough. You have to do like at least twice a year. Well, once a year was never enough. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> you know, when, when you are trying to introduce a new concept, and mm. this is indeed a new concept, at least to us in, in, in this part of the world, it's, yeah. a, it's a, a relatively new concept. You know, so that's why we, we preach once a year. But ideally, it should be, a, I mean, once every quarter is actually it's, ideal. Okay. If you can push it once every quarter, at least once, once every half year mm. is good. You, know, you need to have an idea where you are at. You see, and these checks, one of the, 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 the basic benefits of doing a regular health check is that we know your baseline. When we say your baseline, you see, um, everybody, like, 
statistically, we know what the normal blood pressure, let me yeah. use blood pressure because that's the most yeah. common. We know what the normal blood pressure should be statistically mm. for everybody. Mm. We call, we say 120, 80. Yeah. But you see, not everybody has a normal blood pressure of 120, 80. True. Some people actually have a normal blood pressure, which is far lower than 120, yeah. 80. I am an example of that. Exactly. Yeah. If I see 120, it means there's trouble. My point, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's the point I was coming to. There mm. are people who, by the time they get to 120 over 80, it means that there's damage actually happening yeah. in, their, in their eyes, in their kidneys, wherever, because their normal might be far lower. Mm. You see, now, if you don't have a regular checkup when you are actually uh, normal, when you are not sick, then we don't know what your baseline is. So yeah. everybody will, 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 will be we'll waiting for you to go. <laughs> exactly. We'll be waiting for you to hit 140 before we start treating, by which yeah. time you probably will get a stroke. Yeah. You know, so a, a health check, regular health check will give us an idea of your baseline. So that when there's a deviation from that baseline, we can pick it up quickly. You can even pick it up yourself because mm. if you do it and you look at you study it, when there's a change, you pick it up quickly. You see, so I mean, blood pressure check is, and again, blood pressure check is something you can do every month. Mm. You know, if you actually own a machine, you can do it every week. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, just check it. I mean, once you own the machine, it's yours, you can check it. And the best time to check their blood pressure is when you're waking up from bed before you step out, out before you get out of the bed. Okay. You know, so if you have a machine and it's sitting on your bed post or mm. your, your, your nightstand okay. or whatever, you know, once your eyes open, you grab it, you stay, you, you slap it on, on your on your arm, and then you check the blood pressure. Okay. That is actually the best time. So if you check that BP at that time and it's high, then there is a problem. It's because when you when you get up and you start going about your daily activities, the, the heart pumps a bit a bit more, yeah. your blood vessels begin to constrict and then relax you know so it alters the the the, the readings or you might even hear some news you know you have to wake the children up they start screaming yeah. you know it causes your blood pressure to go up so it might not be as as, as accurate as accurate you mm. know so the best time will be when you're waking up from bed mm. you know something like blood pressure check it as frequently as you possibly can okay. especially if you have a, a family history you see because blood pressure runs in the in the in family so mm. if you have a family history you want to pay attention to it mm. you know if you're overweight you need to pay attention to your blood pressure as well okay i mean and, and again another goal would be to make to, to to get your weight as close to your ID as possible mm. the thing about weight is that as you grow older um, it naturally you naturally pile on the weight mm. especially if you have not been in the habit of controlling your weight you know so it, it, it pays to try and get your get as close to your ideal as you possibly can okay. and that takes time you see most of the time because uh, we really don't plan um, our weight uh, when, 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 when we have a shock maybe you go to hospital and they tell your blood pressure is through the roof then we are in shock. So we try to do and the something, shortcut, very something drastic. drastic. So we go and look for <laughs> supplements, medication, yeah. you know, various weird diets, you yeah. know, dog fasting, starvation, challenge, so many different <laughs> different things to try and get crash mm. the weight. You see, but what, what, what it is is that though, all those shortcuts, I mean, that's why they are shortcuts. They never give you a long lasting um, solution. Mm. The, best, the best means of weight loss or weight management is to check your input, which is your food, mm. and then check your output, which is your exercise. Okay. So a combination of diet or monitoring what you are taking in mm. and expanding will help you to maintain your weight. You know, because okay. weight is pretty much like a bank account. Mm -hmm. If money goes in, money comes out. If more money goes in than comes out, the bank account grows. Mm. So money going in is the food you are eating. And the money coming out is how much energy we are expending. Yeah. So for you as a corporate worker, for instance, you are not likely to expend a significant amount mm. of energy. Mm. So you already have a challenge. So if you are not monitoring what you are taking in, automatically you are going to have a, a I mean, I mean, quite a good bank account. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so you're talking basically about deficit versus calorie surplus that's that's the thing yeah. that's the technical the technical yeah. name yeah. you know so, but, but simply put if you're eating too much and you're not exercising mm. enough you're going to put on the weight yeah. so this year try and exercise some more if your work prevents you from being physically active it means you have to carve out um, an amount of time a mm. day or a week to go out there and exercise but what you see the thing too is that people are exercising right i mean saturdays go to the football field go yeah. to the gym it's filled mm. but that's not enough Consistency is important. When it comes to exercise that is relevant to your health, we are talking about at least 30 minutes of, of, uh, um, um, of aerobic exercise at when least three it. times a week. Okay. So 30 minutes of aerobic. When I say aerobic, I'm talking about it could be dancing. I mean, that's what everybody knows aerobics to be. But aerobic actually, actually extends to jogging, swimming, yeah. tennis, skipping, yeah. you know, any, any exercise that uh, forces you to breathe, you know, heavily, heavily mm. you know. So pick your, pick your, pick your, what, what works for you. I mean, I, I definitely recommend tennis to anybody who is asking because mm. tennis literally pushes you, every, every muscle of the body, you know. So my, so many, my challenge with tennis, though, is that you do have the other disadvantage of a jarring effect on the knee. True, So true. I would rather 
let's say swimming. swimming. My people are afraid of my, you see, my, my, my people are afraid of water. Of water. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there is a challenge with every 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 yeah. you go. So that's for. why. So the, the thing is, pick, <clears throat> go for pick, the one that yes, works for you. The one that works for you, mm. but don't just sit down and expect things to happen. Yeah. You have to be involved. Mm. Then there's sugar, diabetes. You see, hypertension always is i don't know i don't know what the relationship is i mean they, it's like the hypertension will go and then we'll, we'll invite diabetes to come, come, yeah. come. The, 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 the road is clear come and join me let's have fun <laughs> so people who are hypertensive tend to develop type 2 diabetes along mm. the line mm. and and the other thing too is that the things that you do to sort of prevent or keep hypertension in check it works for type 2 diabetes as well okay. you know so once you adopt a healthy lifestyle it sort of helps you to deal with these two major mm. um, lifestyle diseases and they are called lifestyle disease because it is how you are living your life that will invite them in okay you see um, we, we, they, we I've had an engagement with people who say that, but it runs in the family, so whatever I do to come. That may be true, but there are also people who have hypertension in their family who have not developed hypertension. Yeah. So what are they doing differently? They are monitoring these things. They yeah. are making sure that they are putting in the right it's exercise true. at the right time. It's true. And of course, I've also met people who say that um, something must kill a man. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so why, why waste time and then do all these uh, things and then you still die anyway? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, here's the thing. Yeah. Statistically, and in, in reality, we all die at some mm. point. You mm. know, you exercise or you don't exercise you will die mm -hmm. you see but i'd rather i'd rather i mean live a healthy life yeah you know and go out on my terms pretty mm -hmm. much yeah. than to than to suffer and still die I mean, anyway. on that point i think i think one of the things that i've heard i heard someone say and in fact for me it was revolutionary you know in terms of the way my mind worked on this thing he said if the good lord gives you 90 years what state will you be in at 90? Mm -hmm. You see, because the good Lord gives you 90 years. That's not your decision. Mm -hmm. But the state in which you will be at 90, that's your decision. <laughs> and it's about everything that you're talking about from here. I mean, do you want, do you want people, people, to, to people to be happy that you are, you, are da, you are dead or they should be sad that you are dead? I mean, exactly. can't, because if you, if, exactly. you are, if you are always having to go to hospital, they are having to do one procedure, this other yeah. thing, something that you could have prevented. Of course, there are conditions that you can't do anything about. Yeah. That's not what we are talking about. But there are also conditions that you could have prevented if you had made certain decisions. You know, even the kind of food you are eating, a lot of our, a lot of our food um, right now, we are eating a lot of processed foods. Mm. We need to try and reduce how much processed food we are eating. Yeah. You know, I mean, one, one, one of the things I tell my people is that we need to move away from the white foods and go to the, you know, the, the dark, browns. The dark, yes, the browns, yeah. the darker colored foods, you know, yeah. because the whiter the food, the more processed it is. Mm. So white flour, white sugar, you know, you name it, it's probably <laughs> over processed. Yeah. You know, so we need to check what we are eating. We need to exercise. We need to check. We need to do our health checks as well. Mm. Or when you combine these three, these three broad um, aspects it will definitely help you to set the right goals for yourself of course um, individually you need to know yourself because you don't for instance when we say go and jog jogging is not for everybody yeah. you know some people may have to start with walking mm. some would go a, a bit faster brisk walking then yeah. to trotting before yeah. you be jogging don't get up and go and jog if you do, if, if you have problems yeah. it's because if you are your hypertension or your diabetes is poorly controlled mm. jogging could actually tip you over yeah. so you know get a health check i mean it's generally it is the best time to actually get a health check to understand yourself mm. and then from there you, you you can you can plan how you're going to intervene or how you're, you're going to protect yourself from some mm. of these developments mm. in the near future Mm. Let's talk um, finally about lifestyle diseases mm -hmm. and uh, um, the key ones that we should watch out for um, as a result <laughs> of maybe you could say the stresses in society um, and so people make certain decisions and choices because of the stress in society. Um, we do believe 2023 will be a better year but you know usually off the back of a bad year uh, it takes a while, yeah. you know, to, to sort of switch into the goodness, you know. So uh, lifestyle diseases, let's talk about that and, and what we can do to... All right, so I think we touched on the hypertension and diabetes a bit. There's also the cholesterol or the mm. dyslipidemias. They are mm. all part of the lifestyle diseases. Mm. And as I said earlier, they are lifestyle because it's the way we are living, the way we are doing our things that are bringing them on. So the kind of food you are eating, um, oftentimes our foods, we are using uh, um, oils. Yeah that are not just, um, they, they, they are re, um, how do, how, I don't know the technical term for They are thing. rancid. 
<laughs> the oil is rancid. You've used it before, mm -hmm. and you are using it again. It's like and again and again and again. It's like <laughs> let me just say this in three. What you are cheap, oh sandy are cheap, boy dear. Oh sandy are cheap, my dear. They ask the flavor, <laughs> and you are going to use it again. This oil is terrible. I know. What's the issue with the oil, though? Well, I mean, every every time, you see, when, every time heat is applied to oil, yeah. it sort of changes the structure. I mean, mm. I don't want to go into the technical yeah. details, but it yeah. changes the structure, mm. you know, so then it converts it from good oil to not so good oil. Yeah. Then the next time you apply heat again, yeah. it becomes not so good, good oil, yeah. and then it becomes bad oil, yeah. and we are still using Terrible it. oil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's it's, it's going to affect, affect <clears throat> you, you know, your health, mm. because, I mean, the, it's it's just like we, we in the, the computer scientists will say, junk in, junk, junk out. out yeah. So when you're putting junk into your body, mm. you can't expect that body to perform any better than yeah. it's, it's probably doing. In fact, it might even perform worse, mm. you see. So what you take in really matters. So we yeah. need to invest in our food. You see, here's the thing. Most people look at healthy lifestyle as expensive mm. and it's true if you look on if you look at the fact that you're going to buy brown rice and then white rice white yeah. rice is far cheaper than yeah. brown rice that's yeah. true yeah. but if you look into the future and you realize that when you that, that white rice you're eating is going to cause your blood sugar to go up because mm. it has a higher glycemic index mm. and that that blood, um, blood sugar going up would require you to probably go to the hospital more often to get your yeah. sugar checked yeah. to probably start taking diabetes medication mm. to probably start having your kidney check you know because diabetes can affect your kidney to probably have start getting your eye, eye, eye examined when you look at hmm. the overall cost of the effect of that white rice yeah it tells it, it makes you it, it, you know it, it makes you reconsider certain things yeah then number two brown rice is not as tasty i mean this is a fact it's not it as isn't. tasty as white it's rice it's not which also then means that you are not likely to indulge in that brown brown rice to the same degree as you would indulge ah, in the white rice okay. so you are going to eat less which means your calorie input is going Ooh, to go down the, yeah you see, so yeah. then just by switching to that healthy meal, even though it was expensive to buy, you are going to be eating it less, which means it's going to last you longer. Mm. And then you are going to take in less food, which means your calorie it, 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 input will be reduced, which yeah. means you're not going to um, gain as much weight. <laughs> you see, so the long-term benefit of actually uh, uh, yeah. living health or making healthy choices I mean, it far outweighs any other thing. Mm. So don't look at the immediate cost of the fact that you are buying brown rice or brown sugar or whatever you are, or you are, mm. you are trying to buy. Just look at the long-term benefits, you know. Of course, you can always incorporate some, some, they call it cheat days or something, but the idea is that live healthy. You cannot be a person who does not exercise. And some people are actually proud when they proclaim, I mean, yeah, I don't well, exercise. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't I, exercise. It's I'm, like I'm it's an slim. achievement. Listen, I've actually, I've actually, <laughs> just last, was it two weeks ago, yeah. I actually, um, had an encounter with a patient who is not overweight slim. I mm. mean, what, somebody you call mm. slim, and her blood pressure was through the roof. Mm. You know, so mm. it doesn't matter how you look physically. Yeah. What's going on internally is what is matters. What matters yeah. You know, and if you have been indulging in trophy and all these things, and, and your yeah. cholesterol is so high, and yeah. your blood vessels are so thin, in the yeah. um, the 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 lumen of your blood vessels are so mm. thin, your blood mm. pressure will shoot up. So it's mm. not about what you, how you look, it's about what is going on inside, inside of you. Yeah. So you need to make these decisions mm. so that we can not only just pray for long life, we can actually actively... And enjoy uh, the long life as exactly. it's being given to exactly. you. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that one of the things you said, just basically for me, sums up in my mind. Invest on the inputs mm -hmm. and you spend less yes. at the back end, yes. you know. Yeah. I mean, you see, unfortunately in Ghana, we don't do a lot of research because we have other pressing needs, but a lot of research <laughs> has been done <laughs> in other places. And if, if you took the average Caucasian and the mm. average black person, the Caucasian lives longer than the black person. Okay. Of course, genetics plays a role, yeah. but the, the health consciousness plays a role as mm. well. They are more aware. They are more aware. Yeah. I mean, even on, on the streets of Accra, I mentioned mm. exercise even in Accra. Yeah. When you typically take a stroll around Accra mm. and you look at the number of um, foreigners who yeah. are exercising, yeah. who are jogging on our streets, yeah. versus, versus, you'd have expected that there'll be more Ghanaians. Ghanaians, because we are a lot more. Exactly. But you actually tend to find a lot more um, Westerners jogging, Westerners jogging yeah. than their than the, than the, Ghanaians, the, the Ghanaian yeah. counterparts. So For it sure. tells you that there, there, need, there, there needs to be a national reorientation mm. so that we, we, we begin to accept that exercise needs to be a part yeah. of our lives. Unfortunately, our culture promotes obesity. So uh, yeah. a, a lot of us, so, oh, we want to gain oh, weight. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. 
<laughs> what for? <laughs> yeah, you know, and in my life, I mean, I'm a wellness, I'm a wellness person. So yeah. in my line of work, I mean, when 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 you advise people to lose weight, sometimes the first feedback you get is, oh, everybody will say I'm sick. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So so it's yeah. always uh, yeah. you, you you spend more time trying to mm. disabuse the cultural perception, you know, than actually on the main on the main yeah. thing. I mean, it's it's a major issue. We, we really need some some form of national mm. reorientation. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, Dr. Kobe, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thank this you very morning. much for having and, me. Um, Good goals for us to all get into for the year. Health goals for 2023. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? Well, I'm active on social media. Mm. Kelvin Owusu MD on all channels. So yeah, let's let's link up and see how we can. All right, fantastic.